everyone. Welcome to another episode of Peak TV. Chatting today about X2M Connect, who are currently in an exciting market expansion and revenue business growth phase. Joining me to tell us more is CEO and Managing Director Mohan Jasudison. Mohan, thanks for joining us. Hello, thanks. Uh, thanks so much for having uh, having me, and and hello to all of you out there watching this uh, today. Uh, look, X2M was incorporated uh, in. Uh, uh, 2019, uh, we're a technology company. Uh, we collect data from machine sensors, um, water meters, electric meters, gas meters, batteries, uh, and we use them for automation and analytics uh, and artificial intelligence. Uh, and, uh, and, and we can go back and control all those machines from the data we gather without any human intervention. And, uh, and we've landed Lewis in a space that is a very large growth category and, uh, and, and it's rewarding us today. Excellent. And Mohan, X2M has built an industry-leading data collection and analytics platform, as you mentioned. What industries does it serve and what are the underlying factors driving demand for your product? Sure. So, uh, look, the technology can go into any vertical market from logistics, asset tracking, health, click care, you, you name it. Uh, businesses that, uh, that I've run have uh, been successful in part because we're laser-like focused about the markets we're after and we like to go and aim them. Our focus is the utility sector uh, and uh, the region that we like is Asia. Uh, we like Asia because uh, it's had superb GDP growth over a few decades. Uh, it's got a, a big bulge of educated middle class who are really strong adopters of technology. They're urbanising, they're coming into the cities and governments are spending on infrastructure, roads, bridges and, uh, and technology. Within that, we like the utility sector because when you're dealing with blue chip customers, uh, they pay their bills, they have large consumer bases and there's huge amounts of optionality that attaches to that. And we can enter into contracts that mirror the depreciation cycle typically of their water, electricity and gas meters, so eight and 10 year time uh, contracts. So uh, we, run, we have our business focused on the utility sector in the Asian region. And so you're active in the utility sector. Can you give us an example of a real-world live application? Yeah, so look, meter reading is a very simple, straightforward application today. In most countries, meter reading is manual, including here in Australia. Uh, meter reading is inaccurate. It's expensive because it's got a, a labour force. Uh, and just to give you an example, just here in Melbourne, uh, last month I got a bill for my gas that was three times what it usually is. And I'll, I'll share with the audience, it was two and a half thousand dollars. And uh, so I rang uh, the gas company and they said, oh, they, we estimated the bill. Uh, and can you give us uh, uh, a picture of the, the meter reading? So I took it and sent it off. And the bill came in at less than half of, of what it actually was. We take away all of that. We automate, so, so we automate meters. We put a little chip, we make them communication capable. We collect data, we don't need meter readers, we detect leaks, uh, public safety in the, in, in the area of gas, uh, wastage in the, in, in the area of water, uh, and we provide lots of information to the utility to better manage their grid and their services and reduce their cost base. And so how does the business make money from this? What's the current revenue model? So our customer is typically a government or a municipality or a utility. Uh, when we enter into a contract with them, they will pay us an initial fee to, to install our platform. And then when a typically a water meter comes onto our platform, uh, for the first time, we will charge an upfront fee. If they buy our hardware, which is a little chip, we, we waive that. And then we have a SaaS-based recurring revenue stream. Uh, and, and that varies uh, from uh, depending on the amount of data that the customer uh, customer wants. And, and that's you know, good business. It's you know 80 to 90% margin. It's annuity style, it's recurring, and you would expect each meter that comes onto our platform, uh, you, you know, to generate a revenue stream of uh, eight, nine, and 10 years. And so why should investors be looking at X2M now? What are the milestones and reflection points upcoming? Look, um, that's a really good question. So when we established this company, we had a three horizon program. Horizon one was to build a platform and validate it. We did that a long time ago. Horizon 2 was to accelerate deployment. Uh, and we went into Korea, Taiwan, Japan, uh, now Australia, and more latterly uh, the Middle East, and we had what was called a land and expand 
strategy. Get as many enterprise customers onto the platform as you can. We call that the acceleration phase. And horizon three is what we call the transformational phase. That's the phase that we're going into now where the company morphed from being a hardware and software company uh, to largely a software company, a company that gets closer to us being cash flow positive and, uh, and, uh, and EBITDA uh, positive, uh, and a company that scales up, that, that goes from a small, mid-sized company to a large company on, on the global stage. And, and so, so that's our timing. So you know, timing's quite good. And could you just elaborate a little bit more on the market expansion strategy and how you're permeating into new markets? Yes, yeah, so, so we have two beaches. One is to capture the uh, renewable energy vertical, so, uh, vertical. And so this is a solar farm generating solar, sending it into battery storage systems and, and then uh, off to trading platforms. Uh, our software and the patents that we've got around it is very well suited for managing that flow of energy. Uh, and uh, so we've released our first product in that space. Uh, we, our first customer is a company called Green Rock Energy Company in Taiwan. They were one of Taiwan's large renewable energy generation companies. Uh, we are the software provider for Taiwan. They are now expanding beyond Taiwan. They've got mandates in Japan and they're in the process of uh, establishing their operations in Australia. And you will see them emerge uh, as operators and owners of large uh, battery storage systems and will be the software supplier for them. So that's a huge market. Any, any uh, forecast that you look at for battery storage anywhere in the world is the same graph. You know, it's just uh, you know, going to be a very significant sector. Alongside with that, we've broadened our geographical reach. So we have just announced our entry into the UAE. Uh, UAE is a highly sophisticated country. Uh, the government's mandated uh, a smart metering for the gas sector. Uh, and, and we've signed our, uh, we've licensed our technology to a company over there. They will initially penetrate the UAE and then move across into the broader Middle Eastern region. And and we're doing a lot of uh, in depth. We have been doing a lot of in depth work uh, in India, and we we we're getting close to uh, to making a move on that market. And of course, that's a huge market. Uh, and it has got uh, you know close to three hundred million households. Uh, it's a it's also a country that's been. Uh, seeing record growth uh, in, in, in terms of infrastructure, technology, GDP, and uh, and, and we've got a technology that's, that uh, you know will fit fit very well into that market. And looking out broader in the market um, to some of the comparable peers, do you think X2M is fairly valued based on some of the valuations and more recent transactions in the space? Well, uh, uh, Lewis, um, uh, I'll stop short of giving investment advice. <laughs> Uh, let me say, say, say this much. Uh, this is a well-established company. It's on a great trajectory with a very large addressable market. Our existing customers, 76 enterprise and government customers, represent a market of over half a billion dollars. So that's our customer base, not the broader, uh, broader region. Our valuation is one times revenues. And so if you look uh, at comparables, uh, you would see that uh, that most of should spend all the comparables that I look at are valued at a few multiples more than that, and so so investors need to to you know, have a look and and, and uh, make their own judgment. But if you're saying one times revenues is your valuation, you're growing, you've got momentum, uh, you're moving into the software space, uh, you've got a very large market within your existing customer base. You've got a much larger market within the geographies that you're targeting. You know, the geographies that we target, India, Middle East, uh, India, uh, we'll stay with the UAE, Japan, Korea, Taiwan, um, Australia, represent about 20% of the world's population. And, and we're penetrating those, uh, the, those markets. So, you know, I think it's a company that, that uh, could reward on the upside. Definitely. And just on that note, any final words to leave investors with? Well, uh, look, follow us, have a, have, have a look at X2M. Uh, it's a proud Australian company uh, that's punching well above its weight in technologically highly advanced countries. Uh, it's a proven technology, it's a proven management team, uh, and, uh, and, and there's real momentum. And importantly, alongside that, every market that we're in, there's government assistance or government mandates to grow this technology. And, and if you're out there with a good product in a good market and you, 
you've got government support, then that augurs well uh, in terms of a future outlook. Brilliant. And for viewers, the ASX ticker is X2M. Thanks so much for tuning in, Mohan. Appreciate your time. Lewis, thank you, thank you very much. And for all of those who've taken the time to listen to us, thank you.